the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie. It's the podcast. Welcome. Um, talking about our family holiday. Went to Fiji, Bula, Vanaka. <laughs> what um, does Vanaka mean? Thank it does. you. Does it? Oh, does it? Hello and yeah. thank you. Bula, Vanaka. Vana- and Bula we say Vanaka, v- Vanaka Vaka Levu. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. You're Vanaka an thought. idiot. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, um, mate, and it is. They are such beautiful people. But we had... There was the rudest guest I've ever seen, and I know we don't you talk like about to compl- BJ like <laughs> that. Come you on, like mate. To see what I did we, there. You like to complain about everything when you're out. Oh, this glass is too cold with my schooner in it. All that kind of stuff. Too this hot. person was twice as rude as you are. What? Oh my goodness! Like, how awful! T- it was an old lady who had been in the sun more. Oh my gosh! Yeah. She just looked like a suitcase, and oh she was just gosh. complaining to these poor staff the whole time, like a wrinkly old ball bag. The, the rudest... No, don't call Tom that. He hasn't heard that nickname yeah, for years. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, here. I'm here. Tom the sack. <laughs> rudest guest. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> rudest guest. Morbid? What position so. have you seen them in? At a swingers oh. party. <laughs> no. Actually, I had a friend who went to a swingers party on the weekend. Did you? Did you? Same. Yeah. I can't give away too much on that one. Oh, Do what was his name? That? Ryan James Fitzgerald. <laughs> 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 No, it, no, it was a female. <gasps> has, has she been before? First no, time? and she did. She didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. But she wrote down. Boring. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Inga you're should not have, invited Inga again. should have got into it. Hey, that's she my was, wife. <laughs> she was asked. She was asked oh. numerous times, and she felt. What's your language? She felt quite crook. She was oh. like, no. Nah, By what I can't was she was in. saying? Or yeah, diarrhea. Yeah, it was a bit full on. It was a little bit full on. What were they doing? And she obviously had known Tom for 10 years, <laughs> so to see him there <laughs> with that... <laughs> Not like that, she had <laughs> It turns out the um, the mask... I should have got the full face mask. Well, you should have known. Covering my eyes well, like we Batman. would be able to spot you. Yeah. Yeah. I have known where the invite came from Lucy, I oh. that you'd bump into your sister. We've always said to you, the zip's got to be up, Tom. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. So somebody is me. <laughs> oh, I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have just gone into fun. a su- just gone into a swingers party. Somebody stop me! <laughs> um, oh. Can we talk so about anyway. swingers tomorrow on the show? Yeah, it, no, yeah. it's a bit fun. Oh. Yeah, we it, can. It's a no, we seedy, can. seedy world. Oh, really? That I love to do. <laughs> no, that's all in the podcast. Who <laughs> can? Oh, oh <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I love these stories. I adore them. It's in the paper today, the Daily Telegraph, page 45. Manly rookie over the weekend. So we've got Origin Game 3 tomorrow night. It's a big one. And one man we don't want to have a good game is Daly Cherry Evans for Queensland. He um, for Game 1, he absolutely dominated. Mm-hmm. Game 2, he wasn't as good. But he's had to have a week off from Manly Seagulls. That means a young fella gets to debut for the Manly Seagulls last weekend, okay. and that was Jamie Humphreys. So Jamie Humphreys, <laughs> okay, so he's got his first game. And how exciting for his family. His old man was part of the club years ago and, and a proud moment for the family but not only his family his mates yeah right like the, the blokes that he grew up with like he's grown up to be an absolute beast now like he's huge mm-hmm. he's put on a lot of weight he gets picked he's called the Humphrey Bear they had signs down on the sideline the boys got together and said you know what he, he, because Daily Cherries is coming uh, Charlie, Daily Cherry Evans is coming back after the origin yeah he might not play for Manly Seagulls again, boys. This could be his first and his last game because he's also been picked up by Wayne Bennett and the Rabbitohs at the end of the year. Right. So the boys go, well, if he's only going to play one game, why don't we have a crack at first try scorer? So Jamie Humphreys was paying $26 to score the first <laughs> try. So everyone loaded up. This is what happened. As Tom joins in and Garrick through the head. Free bear. <laughs> you don't think his mates were going off on the sidelines as they all collected thousands of dollars <laughs> to watch their best mate play his first game and score the first try. What a night that would have been oh as a group gosh. of young blokes. 
winning a fortune and heading out that night. I mean, oh. you don't you don't want him to play another game. No. Like, that's it. That's You're done. it. We're done. Retire. Well done. Congratulations, Jamie. No, I hope um, I hope he was at least wearing pants, unlike the other Humphrey B. Bear. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Bula Vanaka. Oh, lovely first Fiji. time. First time the Fitzgerald boys have been to Fiji. Mum snuck off for a fiftieth a couple of years ago, Yo. and I haven't heard any <laughs> stories to come out of that one, Kate. That's for uh, sure. Oh wow! <laughs> is this Fijian music? Is this? Is... Maybe. Well, do you know what? Can I just say, we did the Sigatoka River Cruise, which is an unbelievable experience. So it's the jet boats. You know, like the jet boats they have here in Sydney on the harbour, but also Mm. in Queenstown over in New Zealand and stuff. But you go up the river and you go and spend the day with a local village. Oh. Right? So we spent the day with the Tonga village. You meet the elders. They cook your lovo, which is that underground oven, Kate. Yes. They cook in the ground. What did you have? Out of there, oh, was it like suckling pig snails? Or beautiful chicken, pork. It was so it fish. Was, Did you have fish? Yeah, there was fish. They yes. cook it under the ground. Yeah, it yes. was magnificent. Then you get up and you dance with them. You actually give them gifts at the end. So we had lollipops for the kids. Are oh, you so in Hawaii are, now? So all the kids so were running amazing. around off their chops. Oh. Yeah, never had sugar. Is that what you're saying? Oh, you should have seen these kids. The eyes lit up when the chupa chups come out. So that was a great day. There was a few things that went wrong. Like we're not very good as a family when we travel. Oh. Um, um, staying at the resort, you know, I, my favourite meal for me is the buffet breakfast. Oh, I yeah. go on hell for leather. Huh? Rip. No, do you have like two breakfasts? So, I can never decide whether to have the congee oh, or course you the do. continental. Yeah, of course you do. So, I, we're at BJ. <laughs> We're in the resort. Buffet breakfast is pretty shockers, and I could smell burning plastic. What's going on? And I've had a look <laughs> over, and all the staff are going crazy because a kid has decided to put a plastic Nutella satchel into the toaster. Awesome. <laughs> to melt it. What a little turn. And that child was my son, Lenny oh. Steve Fitzgerald. <laughs> What I mean, what a great kid who's made a mistake. <laughs> who's like, Dad, I was just trying to milk the Nutella. Oh, it was too him. hard to spread. Awesome. Eastern. So that stuffed the toaster. I love Huey as well. We went for a walk along the beach, just the boys one day, Kate, and uh, Mum went and got a... She went into the spa, and we found it was a tiny... It was a baby. It was a dead shark on the, uh, it was, yeah. that had been washed up on the beach. When you say Mum, are you talking about your Mum or BJ? No, no BJ. BJ. Oh, good. BJ. Do you think Claire Fizzle Did, dropped in I for a bit of bullet? No, you kept saying mum went here and mum went there. Do you, you don't call, call a mum, do you? Yeah, we. BJ yeah, I do it sometimes. Now, BJ yeah. and I call each other mum and dad. Yeah. I do. I do. do you? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, go and ask mum. Dad, I say daddy. Yeah. Yeah, hey daddy. <laughs> go and ask dad about that. Go and ask dad. <laughs> I don't call him daddy. <laughs> it's, it's a bit weird <laughs> when you start the sentence with smack this. <laughs> <laughs> I call Park that big Mack Mac truck Right in this little garage Daddy No I Let's be very clear I call May's dad Daddy To her Right, right. Okay. Oh, gotcha. I don't yes. say yeah, gotcha. Hey daddy okay. When she's not around Okay, thank you for very clearing that clear. up. Very, very, very clear as much. So, clear. so I kept walking along the beach. Huey found this dead shark, and I mm-hmm. look back, and he goes, "Dad, no, Dad, we need a proper burial." And he, I said, well, "Mate, just let it go because the high tide will come in; it will take it back out. You'll be fine." He said, "No," and this was quite smart by Huey. He said, "No, this is shark karma." If I bury this shark now, if shark I'm crime. ever in if I'm ever in a tough situation out to sea and a shark wants to attack me, they will know that I saved another shark by burying it on the beach. Love they that. won't. They won't. That's so, shark. <laughs> Take him. So I said, All right, go for a swim a couple hundred metres out and see how you go. <laughs> Test it. Go on. Now I want to talk about, right? And I just I dislike these people so much and 13 24 10 if you've ever come across a very difficult guest at a resort or a hotel mm. people who think that they, their whole world 
revolves around them. Yeah. yeah. Because we had an elderly lady there who looked like a vintage Louis Vuitton suitcase. She was that brown. Really? She'd been in the sun oh. so much. Oh, my gosh. She. So we went down for breakfast, right, and we were lucky enough to get there early enough that we got a beautiful table on the beach. So we're sitting there on the beach, and it was pretty chockers. We were lucky to get that last table. This woman comes in, and she demands the staff... You will make room for me and you will go and get me a table and I want to sit right here on the beach. There was no room. Oh, my God. We were asked to get up and move our table across so they could fit another table in because she would not sit anywhere else. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's entitlement, isn't yeah, it? Isn't I've it? paid, I want this experience, and I want it now. And so, so did, did Huey try and bury her at the beach? <laughs> <hoping> the, <laughs> well, an old lady might spare him s- another day. S- suitcase karma. <laughs> if we bury her, we might be able to score ourselves a Louis Vuitton suitcase. Mm-hmm. Then we go, and Kate, you know that there's a, there's rules to this, but we go down to the pool for the day. Oh, yeah. And you know how people get there early and oh. they... Towels. Yep. I bags it. I bag this. Before brekkie, they put yeah, their towels there. The beds, the sun beds, and you put your stuff on the sun bed. This woman, she was picking stuff up and throwing it away, oh. and sitting on people's sun beds. Someone had a go at her. A young guy had a go at her and said, oh, that "My stuff was on there," and she said, "Well, you weren't sitting on it, and we were watching it for the last half an hour." So it's now mine. Well, she sounds like a joy to be on holiday. Well, it sounds like she's been to a lot of resorts. She was constantly complaining to the staff. I did have a funny grab in there, Jess. I was going to do like a KD Lang song to no, constant, constant craving. complaining. Oh, you, did you? Oh, wow. Did you do a bit you, of a funny? Yeah, but I forgot like about it. Had a busy morning. This morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I got up at two o'clock this morning to do it. <laughs> I'm also a baker. <laughs> Let's get it away. <laughs> Do you want to do it live? Let's get no, the, we, right? we could come back, but I want to hear from people. I want to hear the, the rudest guest that you've ever seen at a resort or in a hotel who thinks that the world revolves around them. Oh, oh, yeah. That is <laughs> okay. very good. It was there worth it the wait. Oh, my God. I, Don't get I didn't out of your think car. you could get up that high. No, went to a resort. There was a lady there demanded that they bring a table out and I want to sit at the front of the beach. Mm-hmm. You move those two tables. I could hear her, these poor staff. And, you know, the Fijian people are such beautiful Aren't people. They? Yeah, they, are. Aren't they, they will do anything for you. So we had to get up, move our tables, just to fit in another table for this lady. Constant complaining. Sean in Neutral Bay, who did you work with, Sean? So I, I I worked at a resort uh, here in Australia, and we had this guest who came in for breakfast. Uh, she had one look at the menu and slammed it down and demanded things that were not on the menu. Wow. Okay. Um, things that we didn't have ready, like waffles <laughs> and <laughs> maple bacon. Mm-hmm. Oh, what do you do in that situation, Sean? You kick her out or...? Well, at this particular resort, we were trained to not really say no. Um, yes. However, these demands were so full on that we we tried to get her to get something else that was on the menu, but right. she just wouldn't wouldn't budge. And she was. I don't understand this because I think, and I, I, I've never worked in a resort before. Mm. But if you have someone that's complaining, you're less likely to get completely. What, what you you're want. asking, you yeah. know, and then yeah. when you eventually get it, where's the payoff? It can't feel good to no. have demanded something. No. Sean, yeah, thank but... you, thank you, Sean. <laughs> thank you, thank you, good, thank good, you Sean. <laughs> good point, Kate. and a, a wonderful point, Kate. And good to well acknowledge done. that that you've said something, Kate. I like the pause after. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I want it. It's it's, it's yeah. it was extremely dramatic. We'll let it, it more let dramatic. it land. Mm. Yeah, Yvonne in Kalara, you had the worst people on your tour in France, Yvonne. What do they do? Yeah, so uh, my husband and I, about 30 years ago, before we got married, we booked a trip to Europe, and part of it was cycling tour of France. Yep. yep. Uh, but a gastronomic cycling tour. So oh. every destination was a beautiful destination and beautiful food, right? Great. But you had to cycle there, and they took your luggage for you. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, first night at the first destination where we were meeting and getting our bikes and stuff, that evening, there was an, a middle-aged English couple who... Who we could just overhear complaining about the food. And we're like, because it's not like English food, right? <laughs> awesome. So they were complaining about that. And then the next day, of course, when they had to cycle, they were complaining that it was too long a trip, a couple of hours. 
You know, oh. and you could take it really easy. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, that it was too hot. And oh, and the countryside was not like England. Well, you're in France, <laughs> oh, people. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, so no. we, uh, we, we nicknamed them the English patients. Yes. Um, and they, they basically ended up just riding in the bus with all the luggage to every destination. Idiots. Oh, no. Idiots. Idiots. What's the just point of travelling? Thanks, Bonnie. Well, the English breakfast is the big one. If the English cannot get a breakfast with baked beans and mm-hmm. sausages, they lose the plot. Mm-hmm. Cold meats, cheeses. Oh, you're thinking about food now. Yeah, you I am. Sorry, I wasn't even listening to the story. story. No, I just my you mind know went they to were a buffet. Cycling? Oh, you know, were they? Yeah. I, I, and it was a bit weird that you started cooking in the studio. I sorry, mean, no, plates no. on nine, Ooh. and it stinks. <laughs> Smell of bacon. Uh, the Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Let's talk about this one because the school holidays continue. It's a battle. Like, it seems to go on forever. And then you start feeling guilty as a parent. I don't know if you have fits where they're just spending more time in front of a screen and you go, oh, just, I don't know, go and kick the footy or go and run yeah. around the block or do something outside. I like, to, I like to drop them off into an area near where I live and then I'll go back in a few hours just to see if they're there. Right. Still. Okay. But it's yeah. a bit of a fun game. Right. Um, and like if an they're not there, or? <laughs> then you're on the search. <laughs> She's on. Uh, what about this one, a statistic this morning? And I understand this completely because I spend more time in there than I possibly need to. 43% of people lock themselves in a bathroom for some peace and quiet. It's you sad, know, you can't tell me that when nature calls and you need to go and sit down in the bathroom, yeah. you spend a little bit more time than you possibly need to. And well, it's... You know, there's nothing wrong with doing a solid 20 until you start to feel your bum start to go numb sitting on the toilet bowl. That's when it kind of... There's, uh, there's a garden bed down the side of our house, and yeah. it's only t- it's only tiny, and it can only so. There's a garden bed on one side, and the the walkway is so thin, but you can just fit one chair in there. Yeah, right. And no one goes down that side because it's such a small part <laughs> of the house. And there's a certain part of the day, around about three o'clock in the afternoon, where it gets a little bit of sun, oh. and oh, it is nothing better. Weep to sit in the sun if the sun is out. Yep. 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 And just to sit on that chair and not be able to hear kids. Oh my god! Unless or someone Mr. goes Beast to the bar- in the background, oh, <laughs> Mister Beast popping a million balloons. Unless someone comes into the bathroom, is there a window there that can see the chair? Well, I have been using it as a bathroom. Right, so I- <laughs> it doubles as a bathroom. Really. I ran out of blood and bone, so I've been u- <laughs> using my own fertilizer. <laughs> and you should see how green the plants are. But to think that you could lock yourself in your bathroom just to, and do you know what Lisa's getting sick of where yeah. she'll receive she, I'll say honey I've got to go to the bathroom and she'll go okay yeah. see you in half an hour yeah. and then it'll be me finding something funny and I'll forward it to her so she'll then go can you not send me stuff on the toilet I know you're doing I know what you're doing because it's disgusting hey, is there a just... part of the part of the house for you Kate is it is it the bathroom or is there another part of the house that you just get a what, bit of to me es- time to escape to to hide yes. yeah yeah. Or maybe the garage. Oh, because you continue oh, yeah. to sort the stu- through boxes. Yeah, the stuff in there. How long have you been sorting oh, through boxes? Actually, oh, two years. Can maybe? I ask a question? Are there boxes in the garage at all? Yes, there are. Are you oh, sure? no, I just say I'm going to the garage I'm going to, to sort, sort through some boxes. boxes. No, I think the office is, is that yeah. for me. Right, okay. To- Tommy, what, the dungeon for you That's is different. it hard to have a bit of me yeah. time when it, look when you have so many moaning and yeah. trying and you, to get and out. And you're busy in oh, there, aren't like you? incredible! It's like a second job, you know. Yeah. When there's so much noise in my dungeon, I just I just, sometimes I say, guys, I'm going to have to put the tape back on, you know. <laughs> oh, so don't keep it. a lot of fertilizer <laughs> down there. Tommy. Oh, that's different. <laughs> She's leaning if you have to, Tommy. There's only one way, mate. <laughs> Hate them or join them. This is the. Fit- Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We're on. Yeah. All right. It's time for 60 Second Starts. Kate Ritchie's. I'm still standing. Now. Discover your next Kia at Sydney City Kia. Over Eden Street, Alexandria. Yeah, yeah. 2024 Kia Sportage SX Hybrid. Yeah, yeah. Michelle from Castle on the Hill. You're in the running for it, Michelle. Congratulations. 
Hi, thank you. Hey, Mish Hello. Mish. This is exciting to think about. Can I ask you a question? We're just sure. talk, talking about Nicole Kidman. We're just mm-hmm. completely stumped here in the studio over the last couple of days. I want to play some audio of a question she would ask, and then I want you to answer it, okay, Michelle? Have a listen. What should every woman try at least once in her life? We all know what that answer is, and way more than once. What do you think it is, Michelle? Oh, is it Botox? <laughs> oh, well, we don't know. Oh, well I was so nervous. Mm. Oh, I was excited. <laughs> yeah. There has Very... been a couple of radio competitions over the years that have gone south with an answer like that. Oh, pardon the pun. <laughs> um, okay, Michelle, you're in the running for $200 today and that Kia Sportage SX. Good luck. Um, you're going first. If you have the power at the end of 60 seconds, you take home the cash. Michelle, your 60 seconds starts now. now. What's been the number one most played song on Oz? Radio so far this year, Michelle. Go oh on. my gosh, is it? Oh, pass. Too long. It's Cyril stumbling in. Kate, over to you. Edward Michael Grills is better known as. Oh, Bear Grills. Yes. Name one of the Wiggles side characters. Ooh. The pirate huh? or Dorothy? No. Oh yeah, lucky Dorothy. Mm-hmm. The pirate the is not an answer. Well, Kate, who is who is Keith Urban married to? Nicole. Correct. Padam Padam is sung by who? Kylie. Yep. Which Home and Away star recently celebrated their 80th birthday? Hmm. Oh, let me think. Ray Ma. What US state was Jurassic Park filmed in? Hawaii. What sport does Olympian Anna Mears do? Skiing. No, oh. cycling over oh. to Michelle. Michelle, is Picton north or south of the Sydney CBD? South. Yes. Name one of the stars of the new flick, Fly Me to the Moon. Doesn't Doesn't matter, Michelle, you've got it. $200. Bang. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yes. Wow. Such a poor effort for me. Yeah. (laughs) Poor Anna That was a stroke of luck. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, that's awesome. $200 and you're in the running. Uh, Tommy... Let me get this right. You're in the running to win a brand new car, but you're also in the running yeah. for you and seven mates to win the Origin Prize at the start of our yeah. night, food and drink. Someone will win that Amazing. by the end of the show. End of the morning. show. Oh, yeah. oh my God, Michelle. Well done. All right, we play uh, again, 8 o'clock tomorrow, guys. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Let's talk about the Roxy in Parramatta. Um, what a great song. Um, if you've had a great time at the Roxy before, I mean, over the years, it's been an amazing nightclub, theatre, but it's, you know what, they've let it go. And are a lot they? of people are, the Roxy is just an yeah. iconic venue in Parramatta. They need to do it up. Well, they, they want to do it up. This is plans have been, well, they've been submitted, whether they get over the line, but they're talking about cafes, bars, colonnades, and an auditorium. Plus, they've put their hand up and said, we want to host the Dally M. Awards at oh. the Roxy Theatre in Parramatta. Is it big enough? I mean, I thought it was just sort of pigeons living there these days. Really? I don't think I've ever been. No, it's been waiting for a facelift for a long time. It's, I mean, you can do anything with it. I need to have a look it's, at it. It's an amazing it place. Like. Could like you imagine, a- Fitz, like hosting an Oktoberfest there? Just to get, like, just trestle tables and truckloads of beer. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud yeah, of what I I'd like to get Where did that in. come from? Do you know what? The only way that you're going to get it up and running again... The Eels need to win a premiership. Yep. Right? They need to take it out. And you know what? You just open up the Roxy and you open up that front bit where they're on the balcony mm-hmm. there and they look out down the street to Parramatta, to all the fans. Peter Wynn will be there just throwing out jerseys. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? And this is the way you get the Roxy up and going again. The you Eels reckon? need success. What See? do you think the chances are of the Eels <laughs> no, no winning chance. a premiership? Absolutely. No. Have so, you ever, I've been to Parramatta to watch the Eels. You know, there's a great... Yeah, you would have. And there's a great, just around the corner from the Roxy, there's a great um, hobby shop and remote control car shop. Is there? Oh, yeah. yeah. We, should, we should get that up and going again, too. No, it's going fine, mate. You've got <laughs> such a great range of remote control cars. Why don't they combine it? Why don't they put all the all their train mm. sets and that in the Roxy and you can have a few drinks around it? I haven't thought about that. Imagine if you found love at the Roxy. Like, oh, what if you met oh, your partner 13, there, 24, your 10, have you picked up at the Roxy? 
will pick well, up and meet the love of your life. Well, it could have been the love of your life for 30 things. seconds, Kate. Well, this, you never know. Oh, wow. This is what You're this stretching song, it out. <laughs> this song is called Love is the Drug, and that's mm-hmm. that's what you get. The Roxy music, that's you go to the get. Roxy, and love is the drug when you go there, that's for sure. You love it. And I'm addicted to love, guys. Yeah, is he what, man? Look Give at the me call. one more shot of love. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you doing? <laughs> I go don't and, know. Go and get your just, seat and go and sit down the side of your house again. Do you know what we should do next singles party at the Roxy? You're not crazy. It's not bad. Don't you reckon? I, Parramatta no, is the heartland of yep. Sydney. Parramatta Pump. Full of singles. Safety. There's a few safety issues, though. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> With the case. area it's or the case. building? Get the listeners in. Can we get Kate, Fitzy <laughs> and Whipper out of there? It's about to fall down. But just keep the listeners in there. Prop it up. It'll be fine. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Oh, I just got a text from my mom. Yes, because I'm a textpert, an expert at texting. Write my reply. You got me in love again. I love it. I You've love got me in love again, guys. This is actually, I, I'm going to put it out there. Go on. I mean, Wednesday's are good, winning Wednesday, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, same queen. This could be my highlight of the week. Wow. Write my reply. God, jeez, you got a boring line. Yeah, no. you put a bit of pressure on me too. <laughs> no, I mean within the studio. Oh, okay. Oh, no, okay. actually, no, Classic. more no. broadly in life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Ben is 30 and Cassie is 32. They've been in a, rela- in a relationship for three years. How beautiful. Uh, over that time, oh, no. They've turned 30, both of them. Three yep. years. You're thinking about marriage after three three years, aren't you? Are well, you? Have to be. well, what about those people that date for like 10 years, yeah. never get married, new relationship, engaged in yep. 12 months? So true. I mean, it's what, not six. what a you. kick in the guts, Isn't guys. It? <laughs> that does happen a lot. It does. Which I guess that proves that that person wasn't, wasn't right. the one. Uh, over that time, Ben has oh, been stacked on 15 kilos. He's recently quit his gym membership because he wasn't getting results. Oh, that gym's letting me down. It's He's your fault, go, Jim. Yeah, don't blame the How tools. long did it take you to write this reply, Whip? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> How does he reply to this message from Cassie? So this is what Cassie has written to him. Oh, no, I've hey, got a bad feeling about Hey, honey, I booked a doctor's appointment for you for Thursday. Tell her that you're struggling with your weight and that you want Ozempic. I think you'll be much happier and satisfied in all departments if you drop the relationship weight. I know I will be. Love you. Do you really? It's quite direct, isn't it? Well, you've been together for three years. You're not betting around the bush. Besides, what's for dinner? Gosh. It's it's a bit full on. I quite like it. I like Mm. the directness. Mm, Me too. Me too. I'm getting a good vibe about their relationship. About the openness. Yeah, about that. You know what? I love you. I know you're off to the doctors. Why don't you do this? It's it's going to be know, better oh, for all so, of us. So if a partner of yours said the same thing, <laughs> Kate, you'd be up for the directness? I challenge any bloke to say that to Kate Ritchie. <laughs> They'd only say it once, Fitzy. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there concrete in these boots? Yeah, that wouldn't... That wouldn't Pan out do you well know, it's just them. do you know what do you know what guys don't like? <laughs> what? Guys don't like being told what to do. Well they need it. I no, they don't boys, always need I think it. Boys like to, um, because every time you tell me what to managing. do managing every time you tell me what to do You yeah. love it. No. You it's do. as if you're suggesting to me that I don't have control of this situation or that what I'm doing isn't good enough. So you're putting me down by booking a doctor's appointment and calling me fat. Now, for old mate, no, you, Benny. No, no, no. I need to. I need to step in here. That's what you're reading because you feel um, inadequate and you feel fat. So that's when you read a loving message like that. That's what you're hearing. But what that's ab- in your head. That is what not about, what she's saying. What about hey, thinking about booking? A doctor's appointment. They've already, you're forgetting that they've yeah. probably already had a conversation well, about if, this. If, well, you're treating him like he's an idiot because he, if he, he wanted, because <laughs> he if he can't. wanted to lose the weight, he would have booked the doctor's appointment. So don't try and push no. me into some medical situation yeah. and inject me with a chemical because I am a fatty. It's, it, it's 
It is very full on. I that think I've booked it for you, and I yeah. suggest that you get a ZP. Like, you're not even because married. Because talked ha- ha- about it. You're not, you're even, not married even married, and you don't have control of anything in your relationship. That's what this is. <gasps> That's what this is about, though. This is about you're you loser, feeling get out, ben. as though you don't have control. Get out now, It's ben. not can what I, she's doing. Can I suggest that the directness is leading to him not proposing? Been three years. I dare say the same conversation will happen in six years, then nine years and he still hasn't proposed because he's being told what, what to, to do. do all the time. Oh, this all the is time. very interesting. I, I think two, you are spot two men on. feeling no. completely suffocated you're, by their relationship. You're spot on, Fitz. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Fitzy is... The single one in the room laughs out loud. <laughs> yeah, because you know, what, you know what blokes like this do? Oh, what do they do? They get to a boiling point. And they get to a point where it's a bloke's weekend away and they're going for golf for three nights and all of what? a sudden he finds a local girl what? down at the TAB <laughs> who's oh. having a punt and then he thinks, you know what, Did you this just girl's say actually listening to me. That his girlfriend, what you're just saying, okay, the ladies in the car listening are screaming at you, You, you what you're saying is... She's, she's pushing him going to, cheat. to make him yep. cheat. I'll tell you this. She's I'll tell you this him. for free. She's pushing him into I'll another woman. I'll tell you this for free. <laughs> you're literally, if men want to cheat, you're undoing his pants. Yeah, they really will. Point. They make. They do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, men cheat this guy, regardless of what you do. This women do not make men yes, they do. cheat. Yeah. This oh woman, my God. this woman oh, is, so angry. this woman is pushing him into an affair. Come on, oh. Ben. You, oh, you're ta- she's, oh. ta- she, she's taking his pants off. Oh, it's just an event. Thirty twenty four ten. Give us a call because yeah, this did is you rep- leave? Pulsive. Did you leave? Did you find yourself a cheater that you thought you'd never no, be because no. you had oh. no say in your relationship Gosh. and you were bullied Fitzy, by a woman? The question is thirteen twenty four ten. Has your partner blamed you for cheating? Oh yeah, that's actually how dare you yeah. twist that? Oh, you're gaslighting now. Mm. Is no, that the key word that you? Yeah, this was just about a bloke. Yeah, that's what you thought. Dropping a couple mate. of kgs, and now we've turned it into this. Do you know what? This is why you should never be. If someone's on In a, a holiday, <laughs> you should never have an argument on the phone. Why? If you're on a holiday. Oh my goodness! Because if you, Are you disrespect now saying, somebody on a holiday, oh no, they oh hang God. up and cheat. Then the guy <gasps> might find himself running through an open field. Cancelled. Well, not oh, cancelled. I didn't say anything wrong. It's just an opinion, Jess. God, have you done the you interview with I mean? Alison Langdon yet? What time are you on a current affair tonight, mate? Okay. Love rat exposed. <laughs> Thirteen dodgy. <laughs> Thirteen twenty four ten. I'm sorry for getting so upset. Every caller. I don't even know what the question is. I'm so uh, lost in no. it now. Did somebody blame you for their ba- bad behaviour and yeah. why are you still with them? That's the question. Wait, wait. Brendan in Camden, you there? Yep. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, I agree with UK. I think I like the direct and openness. Mm. Um, I think if I was to get hurt by that, it's because I know... She's right, and I've failed on my end to to stick to the gym routine and everything. Thank you, Brendan. I think so, if, if if you have that mentality, the only way you can respond is to sign back up to the gym and prove prove her wrong, basically. Well, and then would you get rid of her? Would in your mind would you get rid of her and go? Ooh. Well, you know what? I've done this on my own. I didn't need you pushing me into it. I'm going to find someone on my own, Brendan. Well. But then what if you find someone who isn't open and honest with you? Yeah, a liar. I agree. Brendan, I love your attitude, Brendan. You're very... Uh, I mean, wise. the fact that you're agreeing with mm. me is probably why I'm quite happy that you called. But Stay on the line, Brendan. We'll get your details and pass them on to Kate. Let's go to Caroline now from Asquith. What do you think, Caroline? Uh, look, I don't think it matters what you do in a relationship. If he's going to cheat, he's going to cheat. Right. So have you had, someone, yeah, have you had yeah. someone cheat on you, have you, Caroline? Uh, yes. <laughs> what, what what happened there, Kaz? So, after 16 years of marriage, yeah. uh, never fought, never, never disagreed with him, yeah. never said no, never, like, he got his own way all the time, yeah. and uh, his excuse was, it wasn't that he went looking for an affair. Oh, my oh, he, God. It, that it, was... it came to him. Yes, yes. Oh. He, he he just accidentally booked a hotel room, paying cash, so I wouldn't find it on the credit card, and then fell into it. Oh, and do you think it was? Do you think it was the first time, or just no, the first time you found out? 
first time I found out. Yeah. So do you think Absolutely that, not the first time. Do you no. think it was going on for the sort of, let's call it, 10 of the 16 years? Probably. Oh, oh Caroline, it's you just don't so deserve awful. him. Caroline, please tell me you found love since. I have, and the guy is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. He's, oh, he's that's nice. Awesome. See, everything turns out well. Caroline, Not usually, it but does. sometimes. I'm sometimes. Much, much happier. Hang in there, Kate. <laughs> yeah. um, no. Caroline, can I ask also, did the person that he was cheating with in the hotel room, did you know her? Uh, no, I didn't know her, but she was married with two young kids and a devout Christian girl. Ah, ruining Ooh. lives, ruining lives. You got so a bit judgy there, Caroline. You're saying didn't all you? Christians are like that, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that in no her worries. voice? <laughs> Devout Christian lady. Got That's something it. on the weird one. Let's go to uh, Ben now in Monterey. It says Big Ben here now. Benny, uh, whose side are you on here with this argument? I'm on the boys' side. The gay community loves hard-nosed, pushy, controlling girls because they yeah. always get guys over the line recruited onto my team. Fantastic. We what love you them. think? Oh, pushy women. Gay. Is that what you're saying? Pushy women turn men gay. Absolutely. I They're love fantastic you, for our team recruitment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm your poster girl, uh, Big Ben. Baby, Kate's working every day for you, mate. Ben's like a list manager for a sporting yep. team. He's going, we've got more recruits coming mm-hmm. in, guys. You beauty, keep it up, pushy yep. women. Oh, that's amazing, Ben. So have you actually been with men who have actually said that, that they've been pushed into becoming homosexuals? Absolutely. They've definitely helped me up my conversion rate. Yep. Oh, oh this is oh, awesome. you are hilarious. Well done, Big Benny. That is great. Kate Ritchie, you're doing so much good work for Ben. He really appreciates it. I'm not driving And to all the gay community, gay. all the guys out there, they thank you. They collectively thank you this morning yeah. for what you've done I'm for gonna the community. I'm going to have a float next year. <laughs> <laughs> pushy, uh, pushy women unite. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.